not super sharp and he doesn't really try to manipulate defenders too much. So of the seven receptions that he made, I think it was five of the seven were all in body where he could have easily grabbed them earlier. But he's not gonna break away from, from defenders and you know gain 40 yards. Like that's just not what, that's not the guy he is in, in my opinion, but he's much more of a route technician. While he's running a route, he reminds me a lot of like Isaiah Pacheco. He runs really hard. You guys wanna get into our prospect profiles? Let's do it. Oh yeah. So Billy kindly came up with Keon Coleman and Brendan Rice. First of all, Keon Coleman, four stars. This, these both guys are both uh, big, big wide receivers, which we haven't had for, I don't know, like the last maybe three drafts. We've been seeing more six foot one, six foot type players, a little bit smaller, mm -hmm. but these guys are big body guys. So you have Keon Coleman, four stars, six, four, two, 15. Played three years, breakout age at 22% of market share receptions with that 19, which I know I'm just, maybe that's like an old school metric to be looking at nowadays. Maybe I see more uh, uh, Google Sheets analysts kind of uh, say <laughs> that, but I still think it matters. I still think it really does matter if you're dominating on your tank, uh, on your team at the age of 19. I get, I don't really know who he was competing with because I don't watch him play. But at 19 years old to do that is pretty good. He had an average dominator of 30.2, which is perfectly into a nice little bucket. Contested catch rate, something I've been trying to focus on a little bit more this year versus a guy like we talked about with Luke McCaffrey, where his contested catch rate was somewhere in like the 60s. Keon Coleman's was 26.1, which is still roughly from what I've seen and been able to gather about 6% higher than you want, but that's not bad at all. Uh, his total yards per, uh, per route run is 1.9, right around that two point mark, which is Perfectly fine to 12.2, ADOT, 17.5% um, average out of the slot, which is probably no surprise given his size. And then his career best target target percentage per game is 23.4. Anything over 20%, 23% is pretty good for a wide receiver. 15.2 um, points per game best, which is pretty low, but it might have to do with the offense. I think you guys could probably elaborate more on that than I can. I would like to have that number closer to like 17 or 18. Whenever I'm looking at these guys, I always try to go to a website that I talk about on here all the time called Grinding the Mocks, where they compile a bunch of mock drafts from a bunch of, oh, quote unquote, professional analysts and just random people doing mock drafts and they compile like where they expect this player to be drafted. And they have him at wide receiver five in class and his expected draft position at wide receiver 30, which means to me, this guy's gonna be a very high day two draft pick, possibly, really really late in the first um dude's gonna get drafted high and all the metrics that i see i i like and then we have uh brendan rice brendan rice is another guy that's kind of hard to actually profile on my part there's not a ton out there like you would think with a guy who his his dad is jerry rice so you would think there'd be a little more just articles and film and history behind what he's done and there's it's a little harder to find than i was hoping for same with like luke mccaffrey you think there'd be more out there than there was but Brennan Rice, three stars, six foot three, 205, played four years. I think he transferred a couple of different times. Mm -hmm. But he also had the 19 year old breakout age, a 20.3 average dominated, which is low. His contested catch rate, though, is only 20.7. So it makes me think that he's actually probably pretty good at getting separation. Billy could probably talk to us about that. His total yards per outrun is 2.1, putting him over the 2.0 box that I like. Mm -hmm. 13.3 av average at the target, only 11.2 average out of the slot. Again, not surprising given how big he is and his career best targets per game, 16.4%, which is pretty low, 16.3 uh, points per game best. It's not bad, really close to that 17 points per game mark that I like. I couldn't find anything about him where he's expected to get drafted and it's something that I'd like to look at if I was to uh, be tasked with ranking this guy, uh, where I think he'd go, I would like to have some sort of clue as to where he's going, but I couldn't really find too many mocks where he's going. I saw somebody say he's the top 100 prospect mm -hmm. saying, that. okay, so top 100 prospect, he's going to get taken somewhere within the first three rounds. I don't even think that's true. Uh, even with his dad's name, my guess is this guy is maybe a day three type uh, draft pick would be my guess. 
I could be wrong, but that's just kind of what I'm getting. If I had to choose between these two, I'm taking Keon Coleman over Brennan Rice all day. It's uh, it's super interesting because from a data perspective, I think that that's definitely the story that it tells. From a film perspective, I think it brings these guys a little bit closer. So, and I and I think our rankings kind of uh, capture that, to be honest. So, and I have that in the graphic here. So for Brendan Rice, we have him at wide receiver ten, around twentieth overall, and then Coleman, wide receiver nine, fifteenth uh, overall. So very close in our rankings and you can see how KTC and, and the ADP is, is a little further off for sure. Right. Um, so I'll go in the order you did just talking about Coleman real quick. He definitely flashes route technique, but doesn't often create separation due to inconsistent nuance and technique. He doesn't really offer a super diverse release package and his route technique during routes is not super sharp and he doesn't really try to manipulate defenders too much. So I just think all in all, he's really kind of winning off of athleticism for the most part. He does have an ability to like recognize zones and coverages. So he's definitely able to, you know, decipher what's in front of him and play off of that. But from an after the catch standpoint, he definitely, I mean, you see flashes for sure, but he lacks some bend, some burst, lateral agility after the catch. He's big, physical, and fast. So he's going to beat guys out sometimes from that respect, but not ultra fast. He is a calculated evader. So again, I think he's able to recognize and uh, anticipate what's in front of him at times. So he's definitely a smart player, smooth, but he doesn't really possess an extra gear. And I think he just lacks some consistency after the catch in terms of evasiveness. That's key on so, Coleman, right? That's, that's key on Coleman. Coleman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Rice, I guess I can jump into real quick here. Big, lanky guy, obviously, physically imposing. I think he offers really good burst and speed for his size. Um, he exhibits a really well-refined route tree and technique with a diverse release package. So I think he offers something that Coleman doesn't in that respect. He has really he has really good hands, but you do see some body catches at times. But where, like, Coleman isn't, you know, throwing head peaks and shoulder fakes during his routes, that's the stuff that Rice is implementing during his routes. I would describe him as like a master manipulator. He's deceiving defenders and creating separation with route technique and manipulation movements. That said, he lacks something that Coleman does have. He's he's a, a little bit more rigid, I, I'd say, after the catch. Um, he does, for his size, exhibit some good bend at the knee, but in terms of evading defenders after the catch, he offers a lot less in that respect um, and doesn't exhibit elite speed, but he's dynamic in short areas. So I think that it that really um shows up in his release and after the catch like in short areas making guys miss but he's not gonna break away from from defenders and you know gain 40 yards like that's just not what that's not the guy he is in, in my opinion but he's much more of a route technician um and i think he's a guy who could definitely carve out a role at the next level it's yeah the draft capital is going to be huge we're probably going to having coleman over him no matter what because of the the dc but i don't know how do you feel about these guys jake yeah so I'll start off with with Keon Coleman as well. Um, I just wanted to highlight the games that I watched uh, pretty in-depthly. It was the 2023 Clemson game and the 2022 uh, bowl game against LSU. Uh, mm -hmm. So that LSU game was one of his breakout games, basically. I think he caught 160-something yards, three touchdowns um, in a not-so-important bowl game. I think it was like the Camping World bowl game or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> but you know, hey, hey, no shade on camping. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, That's no, pro no shops. shame. No shame. Um, <laughs> the one big thing that I think stood out to me was uh, his lack of extension with his hands. Um, he doesn't go and grab the ball more often than not, and I do find that he actually body catches more often than than not. So, of the seven receptions that he made, I think it was five of the seven were all in body, where he could have easily grabbed them earlier. Uh, he was 19 at the time, if I remember correctly. So that is important to understand because it does happen a little bit less in the Clemson game uh, a year later. But his lack of separation was really, really prominent. I know you provided um, a contested catch statistic mm -hmm. uh, that basically doesn't show that. But at least in the LSU game, uh, two of the three touchdown catches were just defenders draped on him, and he's he's catching, he's catching a touchdown, which to me... Uh, doesn't necessarily translate incredibly well to the NFL for a couple of reasons. I think cornerback play is one of those where there's a huge gap between NCAA play versus NFL play. 
uh, most players in those situations are going to contest that catch at a significantly higher rate than they are in NCAA. So something that I just wanted to, to bring up. And then additionally, in the more recent Clemson game, uh, one of the big things that I actually thought was relatively bad was pre-catch awareness. So not knowing when defenders were on him, there were mm. two or three times where he would catch the ball, turn up into a defender, not knowing where he was actually receiving the ball, which is actually one of the, what I thought was the bigger gap between him and Rice. So jumping off into Brendan Rice, uh, his ability to provide that separation for himself kind of could mask that weakness for me. It was a lot harder for me to see that issue. Um, and the two games that I saw him play was 2023 Colorado and 2023 Oregon. Now, in the Colorado game, it's very uh, important to highlight the caliber of play. So it's much lower than versus yeah. Oregon. Um, his elusiveness after the catch was something that I noticed that he was able to either one or two step right after reception. But then basically after that, as Billy was um, alluding to, no pun intended, uh, he basically has no move. So it's like his lack of ability to have that second or third step um, to then actually drive into an open space was really, really prevalent for me. And then he was really imposing. Like he shows a lot of strength versus um, shittier <laughs> cornerbacks at the end of the day. <laughs> and he wasn't able to do that against Oregon. Uh, one of the things that I, I do really like about him is that in the actual route tree, uh, while he's running a route, he reminds me a lot of like Isaiah Pacheco. He runs really hard. And when you <laughs> see uh, a wide receiver run hard, uh, you tend to see those cuts a lot more pervasively because they're, they're more prominent to you as a viewer. But not even just that. I think that he sells them really well, which is why he is creating as much separation as he is. Um, yeah. That's I, I, I just want to say, sorry, it's so funny you said that. I don't know if you read my notes. The, I did. No. The end, the, my like final notes on him, the box for that, I said it, the second line is heavy use of arm drive and in, in running motion. Yeah. And I, I think that's what you're talking about. Instead of like, it's not so much the leg drive like Isaiah Pacheco, but he's like, really driving those arms and trying to sell either like the comeback or the the downfield route whatever it is but that is something i noticed as well yeah yeah and then last thing i did want to highlight about brendan Wright that i thought was really prominent especially in the oregon game because he didn't get targeted that much his off the ball run blocking is actually surprisingly very very strong oh. um mm -hmm. i don't know if that's something that he's worked on throughout his career uh but i definitely think that at bare minimum that drives up his value in the NFL. And I don't think a lot of people look at that. When I compare him to Keon Coleman, it, it's night and day difference. Like Keon is a big frame that does not want to get dirty. <laughs> Brendan Rice, mm -hmm. the exact opposite. So when I'm thinking about, you know, use cases of players having perceived longer careers, I can see a Brendan Rice being in the NFL longer than Keon Coleman if Keon doesn't hit the, the heights that people are expecting him to. And I think that, for me at least has perceived negative value moving forward. So just something I wanted to highlight. Yeah. I think these guys are going to be a lot closer together at the end of the day. I'm telling you than then we are. And I don't even, I don't mean that during the draft. I mean, like, and like end of the day, like these guys draft capital isn't always, you know, the end all be all. So I do think that he offers a lot as a wide receiver, as a, a well-rounded wide receiver. So I think teams, this isn't a guy who's just Jerry Rice's son is kind of my opinion. Like he's a guy who's Jerry Rice's son, but also flashes some pretty sharp ability in almost all aspects of the wide receiver position where Keon Coleman, I think he lacks a lot of the nuance that you want to see out of a wide receiver at the next level. And if he's going to win off of athleticism, it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And I think Keon Coleman shows flashes. I did say that I do see it. It's there. So he can get better. This isn't, I don't think he's Nikhil Harry. I think he's somewhere in between Nikhil Harry and whatever the next level up is. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about Brendan Rice because I don't think we're going to have to pay much for him. Yep. And I think that he he could return on the investment um, at a pretty pretty high level, at least compared to what I think we're expecting or most people are expecting. Yeah, in, in mocks, we're seeing him drop all the way into sometimes even the early fourth. If it wasn't for Billy being in the majority of the rookie mocks that I do, <laughs> go, going in the late third almost every single time, I, I yeah. think he would easily drop into the early fourth. And depending on draft capital, it could potentially stay just there. And I don't think that that's a bad shout for an early to mid fourth round pick. So, 
Love it. Good job, man. Uh, that was really good. I can see your, your eyes just beaming, bro. This is the best. This is like his, his favorite time of the week. This is, this is <laughs> yes. up his I day. love this. And then having both you guys just like talking smart about something <laughs> like it's, you know, what, what really what's great is the things that like kind of stand out to me when I scroll through the sheets because I'm lazy and it's easier to look at numbers. But when they actually correlate with what you guys see on film, like usually that's a pretty smash in my opinion. So yep. uh, yeah, it makes me happy.